What ails to the global economy, Professor? The economic growth is totally different now than it was uh, before the 2008-2009 downturn. When the, em the emerging markets were growing at 5 or 6 percent and the developed markets were growing at um, 3 percent or, or close to 3 percent, now everybody's growing at 2 percent or less. And it just seems like there's a malaise that has changed the nature of economic growth, possibly permanently. My take on it is the problem is a, a we're moving into a post-industrial age in which the role manufacturing played in the 20th century is no longer applicable. Mm -hmm. And what is, the, what is right now the, the main risk or threat that we have to face? Well, the, the risk that you may be referencing it would be a, a global downturn, which is short run. And my opinion is the biggest problem is the U.S. deficit and the extent to which our government is borrowing to fund payments to our elderly. And when the bond markets wakes up to who, what we call Uncle Sam, it's very similar to what, would, what happened to Uncle Demetrius, which is a reference to the Greek crisis. And, and that would come with a very serious economic downturn, a, a uh, deterioration of the value of the dollar, significant inflation in the U.S., and the whole globe would suffer from that. And I'm, I'm very worried about that. But there's a longer-run problem, too, which is the, the disappearance of manufacturing jobs and the, um, the microprocessor are changing the, in, the nature of the education that we need. We need very significant workforce development in the U.S. for sure, but most other places in the United States, we need a new educational system. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there, there is anything to do. Uh, can we do anything to find a solution to, to this situation, these problems? Well, I, I like to say there is artificial intelligence and there's intelligence. Artificial intelligence is what computers do, but a lot of our classrooms are simply teaching people to memorize things and to repeat it, and computers can do way better than humans at that. So it's very, very important that we prepare the workforce for the much more difficult labor markets that are going to occur, not just in the United States, but all around the world because of the microprocessor and robots. But secondly, in the United States, uh, we, we have a big aging issue, as it's true of much of Europe and Japan and, and China, and every country has to prepare for the reality that the dependency ratio is going to go a lot higher. In the U.S., we have very heavy spending late in life because of public uh, spending on Medicare. We need much higher savings rates as well uh, in, in order to fund that spending. So if you ask me the two most critical things for the U.S., are more savings to prepare for the growing elderly, and secondly, better workforce development to let the kids ready for the reality of the post-industrial age. Mm -hmm. In fact, about, uh, because of the technology, uh, the new technology uh, is changing the profile of the workers. No? It's very diff different uh, profile of the workers that the market uh, needs right now, and only 10 years ago. Yeah, very much so. We had a... Uh, <clears throat> The, in the industrial age, the equipment that was created added enormously to productivity, but it tended to, to make everybody equal on the factory floor. You had high wages, there was not a whole lot of difference, but the microprocessor is great for the few who can turn that into value and serve a large marketplace. But a lot of people are competing with robots rather than using them, and competing is going to be tough because They work hard for long hours at low pay, and they don't care about unions, and they're, they're the really toughest competitor going forward. So we, each of us as parents or grandparents needs to make sure that our children will be using the robots as helpers and not competing with the robots. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much.